abuse led to suicidal thoughts from the age of nine. Even just playing with my dolls, having them kill themselves or go through abuse, I had a lot of secrets. I just had to grow up holding all that in. Find out what stopped her from pulling the trigger. That and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's Top 5 from Studio 5. At number 5, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL led his Seahawks to a slim win over the Bengals Sunday. I'm a mixture of The Rock and Kevin Hart, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but Russell Wilson also made news for his work with children off the field. I, I pray for you guys. I'm always here for you guys. So why not you? And with his Why Not You Foundation. If we can inspire one kid, boy or girl may change the world. If they can get, get a little glimpse of hope, get a little glimpse of what God's done for me in my life, then it's worth it. With six playoffs, two Super Bowl appearances, and one Super Bowl title, helping children is where Wilson's heart really is, alongside his wife, recording artist Sierra. My mom, she was always the one that was really making sure that we went to church, making sure that we would pray together, making sure we would do all those things together. And she showed me faith when my dad was sick. Number four. The first time I visited death row, I wasn't expecting to meet somebody the same age as me. We get our first look at Just Mercy, based on the best-selling book from Brian Stevenson, who as a young lawyer began to blaze a trail of historic battles for justice, helping to free wrongfully convicted poor people from prison. Your life is still meaningful, and I'm gonna do everything possible to keep them from taking it. You don't know what you into down here in Alabama when you're guilty from the moment you're born. It stars Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx and hits American theaters Christmas Day. You the lawyer? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for driving all the way out here. At number three. It's a beautiful day in this night. Folks at the Toronto Film Festival Saturday were the first to see Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers at the world premiere of It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And since that debut here, Tom Hanks and the film have received nearly perfect reviews and ratings. You have to look at his output on television, and it was singularly honest. The film opens in American theaters November 22nd. Please won't you be my neighbor. At number two. My first memories of the Bahamas were just magical. Rock star Lenny Kravitz calls fans to action for the Bahamas following Hurricane Dorian's deadly devastation to the island he calls home. There's no place I'd rather be right now than on the ground, helping with my two hands. Kravitz's heart to help is no surprise. As Studio 5 first learned early in his acting career on the set of The Butler. Lenny, you talk of your Christian faith, and I've watched interviews, and I believe you even led your father to Christ. It's a gift. You know, I'm appreciative of the blessings that God gives me. Blessings he's sharing with his island home on the long road to recovery. I know that we've all been praying for the Bahamas, and that's wonderful, but we can also take action. At number one. I speak to God in public. I speak to keep my rhymes and couplets. Chance the Rapper welcomes a new baby and postpones his tour a few months for fraternity leave, sharing on Instagram. It's been strenuous having to divide my time and energy between family and work. He also notes when his first child was born, he went on tour two weeks later and missed some of the most important milestones in her life. But more importantly, I was absent when her mother needed me the most. At this point, as a husband and father of two, I realize that I can't make that mistake again. So are you ready? The rapper also recently shared his prayer for he and his wife's star-studded wedding. The spirit was in there. We had we had like a special little mini surprise concert for my wife with Kirk Franklin and oh, wow. Fred Hammond and yeah, Hezekiah. That's beautiful. And, 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 and it was and, and the whole union. But between us, like how we talked about what we planned it for was we wanted it to be a union for God. So we wanted it to be like something that he could be proud of. And he knew those prayers were answered when several people at the reception shared. Yo, man, I know this sounds weird, but today just makes me feel like 
there is a God. When you get those interactions, it's like, this is the best thing that could come out of this. It would be the best thing to come out of it. What do you think yeah. of Chance the Rapper taking time off? I mean, I think it's great. Um, I watched some of his interview right there with mm -hmm. Sway. Um, and I just, I like what he stands for. Um, you know, no one's perfect. Um, but I just love how he takes a stand and he's being very open about the importance of being a dad and a husband is and, and how that's more important than his career and his success, which we need to see more of, I think. So, yeah. 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 It's good. Do you think we're saying enough of that in our culture today? The I don't think so. The culture I grew up, you know, dad went off to work. Dad was yeah. the provider. And mm -hmm. so dad, dad went off, off to work. And it's actually sad that, you know, I've, I've heard this being said recently, uh, everybody has an absentee father. Yeah. You know, because, you know, when you're, when you're growing up, dad's off at work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, do you think we need to get away from that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's, a, it's it? a partnership. It's well, a partnership. How, how do you do it? How do you do it? I mean, Chance the Rapper has yeah. enough money to take the time. That's true. To take yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. The average person doesn't. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, in that interview, he was talking about how the best thing you can do is be a good father and be present with your family, whatever yes. it takes, you know, whatever that looks like. Everyone's circumstances are different, but make the effort to be present, which I think is definitely needed. Words to live by. All yeah, right. Definitely. Let's talk about the movie. Yes. What do you think? Just Mercy? Yeah. Oh my gosh! I saw the trailer. Time to figure out it was Jamie Foxx. Yeah, was like, I he went through this transformation. Yes, I watched the trailer and I had tears in my eyes because mm. it just even the trailer moved me to because I feel like it's you know more and more we're just hearing about the injustices of um, prison and um, incarceration and I just think this this is so timely and, and definitely needed and um, Jamie Foxx is brilliant. I mean, you didn't even recognize him. So, yeah, I think it's going to be really good. Oh, I did. Once he started yeah. talking, it was like, okay, <laughs> That's true. I got yeah. it. I got yeah. the voice. Yeah. What about you? What do you think about it? Uh, I think it's high time we address this issue in our, yeah. our culture. And there are multiple issues here. Uh, what is the legacy of slavery? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm really getting tired of people saying, I don't want to talk about that. Or I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to hear about that. Or somehow there's a political motive behind it. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to understand that. And then uh, what were at openly called the Black Codes, mm -hmm. where it was a crime to be in a particular part of town uh, just because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what has that done to create cultures, mm -hmm. whether that's within the African-American community or within police departments? Yeah. And what amazes me is regardless of the racial background of the police officer, the behavior goes forward, mm. which is well, we, 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 need, we need an honest discussion. We need to be yeah. open with it. Definitely. And uh, we need to realize there are innocent people in jail yeah. uh, because of systems that were created. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean that there are some non <laughs> plenty of guilty people in yeah. jail mm -hmm. uh and we need that you know it's it's liberty and justice for all and and how do you walk that yeah where you you have both mm -hmm. uh and we need these discussions to keep going yeah absolutely i'm excited for it yeah and then the other movie mr rogers yeah you gonna you go heck yeah i'm gonna go are you gonna go i don't know i saw the <laughs> documentary and i love oh, it. okay okay so i'm not so sure Okay. But anything with Tom Hanks. I was going to say, are you a Tom? Even if he's wearing a beard, you know, but he's not in a beard in the movie, but it, anything yeah. with Tom Hanks, yeah. I'm okay. I heard he was like just brilliant and just completely just became Mr. Rogers, which I think is. All his films. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's great. Love him. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Good, good stories. All right. Yeah. Well, for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. Well, coming up, a teacher remembers a student who wasn't just trying to get good grades, but was trying to find a family. Hear an inspirational story that began in a classroom and ended in an adoption center. Next. Dr. Benny Berry is a teacher whose students love her. In fact, a few joked they even wanted her to be their mom. But as she soon found out, one of her students wasn't kidding.
Some days I felt upset, angry, lost. They've taken me from my safe place and placed me in a home with strangers. That, I mean, I didn't have any help or anyone to turn to or anything like that. Anthony was placed in foster care when he was six years old due to his birth mom's drug use while pregnant with his baby sister. He knew about God's love through his grandmother and tried to stay hopeful in a tough situation. I prayed sometimes when I was feeling down or, and then other days I questioned him, why am I here? Why, why can't I find anyone to love me? Why I can't I go back home? He lived in group homes for nine years, hoping to be adopted, yet afraid of being let down. I didn't get my hopes up for anything, basically, because I didn't want to get my hopes up too high and it not happen, because deep down I wanted it to work. I wanted to get out the system. I didn't want to deal with the bonds of being a ward of the state anymore. I just wanted to, you know, have a loving family, a forever home. At 15 years old and after a failed adoption, he began losing hope. He got in trouble at his high school and was sent to Pathways Alternative School, where he met Dr. Benny Berry, a teacher at the school. And he came there and he volunteered to say the pledge at the beginning of the day. He volunteered, he was in ROTC at his home campus. He volunteered to hang the flag. I was impressed. Uh, I felt like, oh, this kid is a leader. This kid is a leader. He's different from the rest. He's, he's, he has initiative. Benny was single and had no children of her own. In class, students joked that they loved Dr. Barry and wished she was their mom. Anthony jumped in and wasn't joking. The discussion went to families. And some of the kids are saying, well, I've been trying to get Miss Barry to take me home. And, and so Anthony said, oh, you can take me home for real. And I said, well, no, you have, you know, your parents are doing the best. Respect your parents the way you respect me, and it will, you'll be okay. And he's like, no, really, I, I'm in foster care. And so uh, a couple of students and myself, we didn't know. And we kind of gasped, like, really, you're in foster care? I actually was like, yeah, you can adopt me. I mean, w will you, or have you thought about adoption or? You know, then we got deeper into the conversation. And, and I said, well, if you're going to be my kid, you know, if you was ever my kid, you have to be good. And he said, for how long? And I said, forever, God, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so uh, he said, well, you can, you know, look me up. I'm, I'm, I can be adopted. You know, you can take me home. Anthony gave Benny his information and the adoption website. I had never planned on adopting uh, because I didn't know. I didn't know the process for adopting. Only thing I knew about adoption is what I've seen on like a Lifetime movie. I never really believed, I'll say in the first few days, that it was something that I could do. It came time for me to leave Pathways and I was like, don't you forget about me and she didn't forget. When it became more real, I had to. I had to pray about everything. Um, I asked God to order my steps, everything that I want to do. I was like, okay, Lord, show me that what I'm doing is not just raw emotion. It is what I really should do. So I felt like God was showing me, yes, this is what you need to do, step by step, ordering it, ordaining it. To Benny's amazement, there were no roadblocks to the application process, and soon they began a trial adoption period. Later that year, on National Adoption Day 2017, Benny officially adopted Anthony. I was very nervous. It was, you know, all the anxiety and the tension, like, this is really happening. Today's the day. I actually, we both couldn't sleep the, the night before. We spent most of the time talking to each other. So that was a very good bonding period. National Adoption Day was an emotional day. My name was put on his birth certificate. His name was officially changed. It became real on that day. Everything we had prayed for, every step that I had asked God to order, we're now at the end of the road. It's over, it is official. We are a family. Nobody can change. You me the trait that best defines this new family of two is gratitude for one another and to God who opened the door and their hearts. He's bringing us all the way, he's carrying us. Like he carried the cross, he's carrying us on his back. 
I'm thankful for her just loving me and taking a 16 year old, well, 15 going on 16 year old boy into her home, a troubled boy at that. I love it, it's something that I never thought I would have. I'm happy. For someone my age to get adopted, it, you know, it's very rare. I didn't know that I could love somebody so much besides my parents. I needed him probably as much or more than he needed me. I don't tell him a lot because I don't, I don't want to think he has the upper hand. <laughs> but I am more than proud of him. I thank God for the opportunity to help mold somebody who I know is going to do wonderful things. I love that story. And I really think adoption truly is a reflection of God's heart. Absolutely. I mean, she said his name, my name was on his birth certificate. And that's just such a reflection of God. God is our father. His name is on our birth certificate in heaven, you know. But what's going through her mind, yeah, the, the verse that, that came to my mind was no greater love. She's, yeah. she's literally saying, I'm going to lay down my life. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give my all. And I like her qualification. Are you going to be good? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For how long? <laughs> and then the response. But here, you know, it, but it is. It is a picture of what God does for all of us. Yeah. We're all adopted into his family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yay. Up next, a woman is troubled by suicidal thoughts and vows to end it all. Watch what happened right when she was about to pull the trigger. Don't go away. Like many other nine-year-old girls, Eli played with dolls. But she wasn't hosting tea parties. She was play-acting their suicides. For years, Eli wanted to end it all, and one day, she had a plan to do just that. I had my storage key, and I sometimes would just clench it because I didn't know if I was gonna make it that day. The key Eli good enough held so closely would open the door to the ultimate escape because behind it was a loaded gun. Why the heck would I want to live? I always internalized everything, so not only was I in complete torment all the time, but it was my fault and I'm never gonna get it together. From a young age, Eli was sexually abused by someone she knew, but she blamed herself. And by age nine, she was battling thoughts of suicide. Even just playing with my dolls, having them kill themselves or go through abuse. I had a lot of secrets. I just had to grow up holding all that in. By her teens, she was cutting, addicted to drugs, and was hospitalized multiple times for anorexia. It was like the inside of me was just always screaming and I never had relief. It was constant agony. Then at 16, she seemed to be turning a corner through counseling until her mother died unexpectedly in her sleep. Everyone was so worried about me dying. She just died. And so I, I, I got left with all these things I didn't get to say. Just regret, all consuming regret and shame. I, didn't know how to handle it. After high school, she moved to L.A. and was doing whatever she could to get drugs. Trying to get help, she tried rehab several times, but always relapsed, unable to find peace. I was always tense. It's like if someone took a shotgun and just blew a hole through me, trying to stop bleeding, just this unrest. I just couldn't even imagine living any longer. So she got a gun and put it in a storage unit, waiting for the day she had the courage to turn it on herself. But as much as she wanted to die, she knew what it would do to her family. Living was actually harder than killing myself. I was constantly living just so I didn't hurt other people, but it was never for me. In her decade-long cycle of addiction and suicidal thoughts, Eli also contracted HIV. It just left me completely baffled and feeling even more hopeless. 
Then in 2012, Eli had a flashback to her childhood trauma, followed by a seizure. My body can't stuff one more thing. It, it's just exploding, like I'm done. The loaded gun called to her. So with the key in hand, she went to her storage unit. But something stopped her. If you're really gonna do this right, you should go back, see your family, get some closure, really for them. Looking sickly and gaunt, she went to visit her dad and his girlfriend, Debbie, who begged her to go to rehab. She was just weeping for me and it was, it was just profound and so I agreed. I was like, man, okay, I could do 30 days for her, then I'll kill myself. So they took her to Captive Hearts, a Christian rehab home. There, Eli saw a familiar face. It was Chaplain Judy Bowen, a counselor she met 10 years before. I said, Eli? And she looked at me and her face lit up and she said, Chaplain Judy? And I said, I thought you were dead. They'd met during Eli's first attempt at rehab but Eli had bolted after only a few weeks, leaving behind a rumor that she'd committed suicide. Judy had thought about her often. Was I able to say enough about trying to lead her to Jesus that it made an impact that she could cry out to God? I didn't know. Now, Judy had a second chance, but it was clear Eli didn't want to be there. So broken, so angry, Eli was to the point of self-destruction. We were the last hope. So Judy and some other counselors took Eli to a prayer service at the healing rooms in Santa Maria. The pastor had a random word and just began to cry. He said, somebody here has been in such a dark place and the Lord is telling me he's healing you right now. Don't take your life. That word opened the door I never felt so free and loved in my life. I just accepted Jesus. I completely surrendered to him fully. God didn't care about any of it. My problems, like, it, just, it didn't even matter. Eli recovered from addiction and would no longer be haunted by suicidal thoughts. She says God also healed her of HIV. I always tell people God is a show off and he completely blew my mind. What had been a tombstone for Eli turned into a stepping stone for her future. It just showed me what he can do for every one of us if we allow him to do the work. Through Eli's testimony, her bond with her family members has strengthened and they have come to know more of Jesus Christ. Eli is now married with two children and as a musician and writer, she points others to Jesus. Every lie the enemies told you, it's shameful. You're not good enough. You should die. All those horrible things, it's because you have a destiny. If you're still alive. You're a miracle. And you just have to reach out to God. And He loves you. And there's, it's not a mistake. You're watching this right now. Um, this is exactly for you. Grab hold of those words that Eli just said. The reason these suicidal thoughts are coming, the reason the enemy is trying to get you to take your own life, the reason is you have a destiny. You have a hope, you have a purpose. God has a plan for you. Don't cut that plan short. Let his plans work out in you. Now, if, you, if you're going through depression, I encourage you, keep on going. Even if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death and everything looks horrible and you start asking, why should I go on living? Well, keep on going because he will deliver you to the other side. Uh, one of the worst things you can do if you have problems with depression, if you have problems with suicidal thoughts, is to then start into drugs and alcohol. That's exactly what Eli did. It is a slow suicide. It is a slow way of denying your own life. It is a slow way of cutting off your destiny, your hope, your future. And then the other piece of it is all you're doing with alcohol is irrigating the problem. 
because alcohol is a depressant. And drugs, the drugs that are available today, particularly all the opiates, all they do is depress you. All they do is bring hopelessness. All they do is bring chains. They don't ever bring anything that is lasting life. But the good news is Jesus came that you might have life. He came that you might have a hope, have a future. He came so that those voices could be shut off in your head and you could hear what he has to say for you, which is exactly what he gave to Eli. I have a destiny for you. I have a plan for you. Let's walk that plan together. If you want this, just right now, stop what you're doing. Don't change the channel. Ask God in. Ask Jesus to take the thoughts away from you. Tell him how you want his destiny for your life. And when you do that, he'll answer. He'll come to you. Let's pray. Jesus. That's right. Say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus, I come to you today. And Lord, you know the meditations of my heart. You know the thoughts in my mind. And Jesus, I ask that you would take them away, that you would rebuke them. And Jesus, give me your hope. Give me your future. Give me your love. If you do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray, let me know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a verse, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. God bless.